Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is my TBR for the month of May. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. And in the interest of getting through some of those books, although I do have a bit of a library problem at the moment, I have got another TBR for you. That is my TBR for the month of May. And in the month of May, so many readathons have been announced. Some of the books I've chosen will handily tick off participation in some of the readathons. So we will see how it goes. A lot of the books on this TBR are possibilities, as I often say. I feel there's very little chance of me actually getting to all of these books. But if it's for a book club or a buddy read, those are the ones I'm definitely going to be getting to in the month of May. And all of the rest, we will see how, how reading goes for May. So first of all, I thought I would mention the several readathons that I hope to participate in. And for for most of these, I won't actually be fulfilling all the prompts, but I think that they're all interesting readathons. There are also other readathons in the month of May. If I was to talk about every single one of them here, I think we would be here for a very long time. So I'm just going to mention the ones that I think I might be able to touch on in my reading and that I want to support. First off, um, the one I'm really, really looking forward to and have tr tried to fulfil the prompts <laughs> is Misery May. Now Misery May is a new readathon for this year which is being hosted by the wonderful Gemma from Gemma Books and Scott from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. And their idea is to get us to read miserable books but mainly Hardy. Hardy has not yet had his own readathon that we know of on booktube and what better way to celebrate him than with a month of reading some of his books and some other miserable stuff besides. So the second readathon that I really want to support but I don't think I will fulfil all of the prompts is the Spoonies readathon. This is a readathon hosted by Emily from Novel Novels and Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf. And these two lovely ladies are raising awareness of disabilities, both visible and invisible. And I think that that's really, really important. And I will definitely be reading at least one book to support this new readathon. The other readathon that has come up that I think will overlap with Spoonie's readathon that is also really important and close to my heart is Mental Health May and this is being hosted by Marilyn Maya Mendoza and Kim from Middle of the Book March. Again this is a very much a raising awareness readathon all about reading books centering around mental health and I will be trying to support this readathon. I have found something from my own shelf that I could read and I also have an audiobook that I think will work for both Spoonies readathon and Mental Health May. The next one I have participated in before and that's May of the Moderns hosted by the lovely Margaret Pennard. I love reading books written in the modern time period. The time period we're talking about runs from roughly 1901 to about 1945, Margaret said in her announcement. So I do have a couple of books on my shelf that I would love to get to that are from that time period. And finally, the last one that I can possibly talk about and fit into this video is Montgomery May. And this is to read something by L.M. Montgomery. It's hosted by Beautiful Minutia, Novel Idea, Courtney Reads, Chantelle Reads All Day, and Voyage of a Time Wanderer. And all of these lovely channels are getting us to read Ellen Montgomery and as you will know if you've been here a little while I read almost the entirety of the Anne of Green Gables series last year and I do want to get to more Ellen Montgomery but I discovered after reading the Anne of Green Gables series that I had missed two books that sort of tie into this series both called The Chronicles of Avonlea so I think The Chronicles of Avonlea and The Further Chronicles of Avonlea. I showed both of these in my 
audiobook TBR. They're still on my audiobook TBR. So I thought I would get to both of those for this readathon and it also will overlap into my Spoonies TBR. Those are the readathons and I will link everybody who I've mentioned in the description down below. I'll link all of their announcements so that you can go and find out about these readathons. As I've said, there are others going on in May. I just don't have the brain space for any further readathons, unfortunately. As I say, possibilities all round, but let's get into what the books are that I plan to read. So the first book doesn't actually go into any of these readathons that I'm aware of, and it is of course the book for my own FOMO book club that I run with Jack from Spread Book Joy and Gemma from Gemma Books. And in the months of May and June, we will be reading The Dance Tree by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is our fourth pick for the FOMO book club. And as I said, it runs, each book runs across two months. So there is some likelihood that I will be reading this one in the month of June because May is quite packed and I like to read it nearer to our live show. With FOMO Book Club at the end of the two month period we have a live show to discuss the book we've read and invite you all to come along and join us in the chat. There is also a Discord group and there is also a Goodreads group if you'd like to join either of those they'll both be linked in the description down below and we'd love to have you along for reading The Dance Tree. I don't really know too much about what this is about. I know it's a historical fiction, I know there is dancing in this. I don't want to know too much more, I'm quite looking forward to the surprise, but I do know I really really enjoyed Kieran Millwood Hargrave's writing in Julia and the Shark, so looking forward to getting to this one for the book club. And the other thing to say about FOMO Book Club is that if you have been reading our previous book with us, Goodnight Mr. Tom by Michelle Magorian, you have not missed the live show. The live show for Goodnight Mr. Tom is taking place on Jack's channel, Spread Book Joy, and that's going to be on the 7th of May at 4 p.m. BST. So do join us for that. The second book club that I want to definitely join in with, haven't mentioned them for a while. I think I've taken a bit of a break from the books. Uh, one because last month's book I had already read and I didn't actually make it to the March book even though I know it's a book I'm really really going to like so I do need to catch up. But it is the Killer Reads Thriller Month Book Club and it's hosted by AJ over at AJ Dunn Reads and Writes. For this book club each month the book is from the list of uh, Penguin and Random House's 60 greatest thrillers of all time. And this month, very excited because the book is going to be The Expendable Man by Dorothy B. Hughes. I don't really know much about this book either and I kind of want to keep it that way. I think it's going to be an interesting surprise. Apparently it's a famous thriller. Um, Persephone have published this beautiful copy that you will have seen I bought when I went to Bath. I'm really really looking forward to this. I'll tell you more about it when I've finished it because I would really like to keep everything a bit of a surprise on this one. I also of course will be carrying on with the Women's Prize for Fiction plod along that I'm running with Charlie Brook and Gemma from Gemma Books. When the shortlist was announced last week I had actually, despite reading 12 out of the 16 books, there were still two books on the shortlist that I had not yet got to. Next up for that I'm going to be reading Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. I probably will start this in April on our next plod on Sunday but <laughs> I do think that this will go into May. The other one on the shortlist that I've not read yet is Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris and I'm waiting for that to come through from the library. I do also have one book out of the library and one book on the way from the library that were on the long list and didn't make the shortlist and that's Homesick by Jennifer Croft and Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow and I will hope to get to all of those in May but it's looking like a very busy month so we will see how it goes. I also do have a few buddy reads in the month of May and one of them doesn't fit into the readathons but this is going to be my 
cheering up book I think to give me some comic relief from Misery May. This is Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. Thanks to my mum who's lent me this very cool copy and I'm going to be reading this with Lynn who is Flick Reads over on Instagram. Her Instagram is fantastic and I'm really looking forward to our first buddy read together and this was one of my books that was one of my 23 to read in 2023 so I am absolutely looking forward to being able to have a book that makes me laugh rather than cry during the month of May. My other two buddy reads I'm going to fit them into some prompts so let's go straight into Misery May. Now there are six prompts I believe for Misery May. The first one is to read some Hardy and for that I'm going to be joining in the group read and going really really heavy with the misery by reading Jude the Obscure. I believe this is Hardy's most miserable work. Uh, certainly I've seen an adaptation and I have never yet plucked up the courage from watching that adaptation to read the book. I'm sure this is going to be a very miserable time. I'm glad I've got a funny book to contrast with it. This is going to be really, really, really sad. So that's my main Hardy for the month. The second prompt was to read some Hardy poetry. And again, I've been raiding my mum's bookshelves. She's kindly lent me poems of Thomas Hardy, selected and introduced by Claire Tomalin. I don't know how many Hardy poems I will get to, but it's quite a slim volume, so I might be able to get to all of these. And yeah, fit in some poetry. I haven't read some poetry in a long time, so I'm looking forward to the fact that there is actually a prompt to make me read some poetry. Then there was a third prompt to read a devastating book. Now as if I'm not already doing that with Jude the Obscure, I am probably going to pick up a book that was sent to me by Gemma from Gemma Books. So I believe when Gemma sent me this, she did tell me it was the most horrific book she'd ever read. So I thought, why not read another really devastating, horrific book for Misery May? And the book she sent me is S, a novel about the Balkans by Slavenka Draculic. This is set during the height of the Bosnian War. And uh, yeah, Gemma's told me it's absolutely horrendously traumatic. So... We will see if I can cope with this on top of the Hardy misery as well. Uh, wish me luck. There are also three buzzword prompts and this is where I've probably gone a bit random. But each of the buzzword prompts related to a more obscure Hardy book but I've picked some books from the giant bookshelf and that I'm going to be reading as Buddy Reads to very loosely fulfil these prompts. So the first one was Cliffhanger slash underwear and I don't think I have any books I thought would apply for underwear and if I did I would probably save them for Garb August so I have got instead a book that I mean it's a thriller so there's a chance of cliffhangers and also I picked the one that says it's set in seaside places so there may be some cliffs in this Sorry Gemma and Scott, but that's that's what I've got. That's what I've got on my shelf. So I picked Flesh and Blood by Caroline Mitchell. This is a DI Amy Winter thriller. It's definitely not the first in the series, but it's the one I have. And the author sent me this when I won a giveaway from her on Twitter a couple of years ago. So I really do need to get to this. And it's definitely about a seaside community. So yeah, seaside, cliffs, cliffhanger. Next up uh, we have the prompt of building or architecture and this is kind of a building. It's one of my buddy reads. I'm buddy reading this with Gemma from Gemma Books. We always have a great time on our buddy reads and I'm sure this one will be no different. So we've got The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster which kind of feels like it should be a FOMO book. So it's definitely a book I feel I've missed out on by not reading when I was young. And a toll booth sounds like it is a building. So I believe this is kind of fantasy. I've read about this in I think at least two books that are books about books. Probably read about it in Dear Reader by Kathy Rensenbrink and if not I read about it in Bookworm by Lucy Mangan. This is like a really classic children's fantasy 
maybe even sci-fi book, I believe. And uh, I've got this nice 50th anniversary edition, but this isn't from the giant bookshelf. I've also borrowed this from my mum. I've had it for some time, so she may have forgotten about it. Final prompt for Misery May is stars slash astronomy. So I've gone with a book with sky in the title because sky is where the stars and the astronomy is. And I'm going to be reading Big Sky. It's my third buddy read for the month and it's going to be with the lovely Nikki from Red Dot Reads. Again, we always have a fabulous time on our buddy reads. I've been longing to get some more Kate Atkinson. So this, I believe, is in the Jackson Brody series. I've kind of given up on reading Jackson Brody in order. I've definitely read Case Histories. I think I may have read the second book, but I definitely haven't read the rest of the series that comes before this one. And I think this is the fifth book in the series, but it has Sky in the title. So that's related to stars and astronomy. Yeah, again, this actually features a seaside village that Jackson Brody has moved to. I don't really want to know too much about this one either because I'm sure it will be a really great crime fiction book. I'm never let down by Kate Atkinson so far. So looking forward to reading this one with Nikki in May. That is everything for Misery May. It's the one readathon where I've managed to find something that very, very tenuously meets each prompt. So we'll go with that. Next up, the Spoonies readathon. I don't have as many books for this readathon. A book I've wanted to get to for ages is Disability Visibility by Alice Wong. Unfortunately, the only way to get this through my library is to get it as an ebook. Now, this month I really, really hoped to read an ebook that was again another book I could only get from the library if it was on ebook. And I just really, really cannot seem to read ebooks. I, I've tried. I can read a graphic novel on my phone, but reading ebooks is just something I just can't seem to do. So I don't know if I will get to this one. But at least this one is a series of essays by various people, I believe. I would really like to read these essays, and as they are essay shorter essays, I may be able to read that on ebook, I don't know, but it is a book that I would definitely like to get round to at some point. Two of the prompts on the Spoonies readathon were to read a non-fiction about a disability or a chronic illness, and another one of the prompts was to read a book from an author with a disability or chronic illness. And the author I've chosen is Michael Rosen, and Michael Rosen for me is an absolute legend of literature. He wrote many, many children's books, all of which are very, very beloved, many of which I've taught in school. And Going on a Bear Hunt has to be the highlight of every year with every class that I've probably taught. It's an absolute classic. I love Michael Rosen's poetry. As a child, we read all of his poetry. It's just brilliant. And if you don't know anything about Michael Rosen, during the very, very early days of the first COVID lockdown, he was terribly, terribly ill with COVID in hospital, fighting for his life in intensive care. And he has since mostly recovered, is out of hospital, and he has recently released a book called Getting Better. And I feel that this would fit both of these prompts because it charts his difficult recovery from COVID, I believe, but the after effects of COVID. And it's called Getting Better. And I think the, the subtitle was something like, it was something related cleverly to Bear Hunt. So it's something like, um, about having to go through it. And yeah, I think this would fit this readathon really, really well. And I do really, really want to read this nonfiction from Michael Rosen. There is an audiobook of this, which is narrated by Michael Rosen himself. And that is how I would like to read this book. That also does tick off the accessible format for me, um, which was one of the other prompts uh, to read a book in an accessible format. I find audio is very, very accessible to me, particularly when I don't feel like actually looking at a book, I can put an audiobook on and listen to that instead. So I also have for um, audiobooks again, another accessible format book, 
and I'm including it as classics with representation of chronic illness. I have also got, as I said earlier in the video, the Chronicles of Avonlea two books to listen to on audio. They're already in my audio library. That will also fit for Montgomery May, but I have chosen this because Marilla Cuthbert, who in um, Anne of Green Gables is one of the two people who take Anne in and give her a better life. I feel like she will be a key character in the Chronicles of Avonlea because these are, I believe, stories that take place in Avonlea where Marilla and Anne lived after Anne has gone away to college and that sort of thing. And yeah, I'm looking forward to revisiting Marilla. She's a very good example of representation of uh, a chronic illness. She has headaches which in the first book are sort of threatening to lead to possible blindness. So yeah, I, I thought Marilla was a really, really well written character with a chronic illness or disability. And the last book that I have to fit a prompt for the Spoonies Readathon is A Comfort Read was one of the prompts and I've picked for that my Aurora Tea Garden book of the month which is for the read along into the library hosted by Ange from Ange's Book Chatter and Amy from Booktube with Amy. They are reading one Aurora Tea Garden book by Charlene Harris every month until they're finished and it will be the fifth book in the series in May, which I'm delighted about because this is the first time I have read any of the books in this omnibus. I've shown many times Omnibus 1, which had books 1 to 4 in it. I have never actually read book 5, uh, which is called Dead Over Heels. So I'm looking forward to reading Dead Over Heels and getting on to the books that are not a reread for me in the Aurora Tea Garden series. So far I haven't loved the Aurora Tea Garden series and I can see why I kind of left off at book four and didn't get to this omnibus but it's part of my giant TBR. In four months I should be through this omnibus as well. Exciting. For Mental Health May I only have one book on my shelf that I think is probably appropriate to this and this is a book I've been meaning to get to for such a long time and the title of this book has kind of been a bit of a mantra for me when trying to not let anxiety get the better of me. So it's by Susan Jeffers and it's called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway and this is a, a famous book that has sold over two million copies it says at the top there and it, this was um, a revised and updated edition so I think this has been around for a very long time. I think it was first published in the 80s. But this revised and updated edition was done in 2012. I think this will have some useful tips for me for getting past anxiety. I know at least one person in my real life who has really, really benefited from reading this book. And uh, yeah, I may get around to it in May. If I don't, I was thinking that actually the Michael Rosen book as well will also deal with mental health as well as physical health in his recovery. So I'm using that for mental health mate as well. The final readathon I've got two possibilities for is May of the Moderns. I've already mentioned all the others and my two possibilities for books that are on my shelf that were written between 1901 and 1945 are The Singing Sands by Josephine Tay. I believe this was from the 1930s. It actually says 1952 in the front here, but I'm sure when I looked online, the original publication date was in the 30s. Could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong about Josephine Tay, but she definitely was writing within the modern period. So I'm going to give myself a bit of leeway if I do get to that one. And the other one is an Agatha Christie book, but it's one of her ones written as Mary Westmacott. And that is the third book she wrote as Mary Westmacott, Absent in the Spring. I'm working my way through these ones. I've actually already read one of the later ones, The Rose and the Yew Tree, because originally that was the only one that I owned. But I now have all of them and I've read the first two. So Absent in the Spring is the next one. Again, as I've said many times in this video, it's not a book I know an awful lot about. It says it's about someone returning from a visit to her daughter in Iraq and uh, somebody who finds themselves unexpectedly alone and stranded. Uh, I find these 
books written by Agatha Christie under a pseudonym. Really, really interesting. They're much more on the fiction side than her crime fiction, but I think her writing style always shines through. So I will hope to get to this for May of the Moderns, but we will see. Both of those two are just possibilities because obviously I have mentioned a lot of books here. What I haven't mentioned is that I have also hauled many, many books from the library lately. And there are definitely books from the library that I would like to read in the month of May, but I'm not going to add to this video because I think it's already really, really long. Do let me know in the comments, what are you planning to read in May? Are you joining in with any of these readathons or any readathons that I may have missed in the excitement of these readathons? But yeah, whatever you're reading, I hope you have a lovely time reading it in May and do let me know what your plans are in the comments. If you have enjoyed this video today, I would love it if you gave it a like. And if you would like to, please do consider subscribing. I do create bookish content every week. Quite a few books there raided from the giant bookshelf. Quite a few I've borrowed as well, so it could be a mixed month. I think that's everything for today. So thank you for watching and I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.